I'm sure you've seen them flitting around atop a pond like some frolicking water puppies. I mean, who knows what they're up to, but it looks like fun, doesn't it? Look at that one, rolled right on his back. Now, if you want to play around on the surface of the water, there's a couple ways to do it. You can be sort of half in, half out like this fly. You know, have a nice little float around. However, this fly isn't really built for water sports. It has some trouble with the moving part. And that's a bit unfortunate. Because water striders are very good at hunting things that have accidentally wet themselves. Jerry, that's an awkward line. They have this long needle-like proboscis at the end of their face, and they can use it to poke right through the outside of a fly. Oop, <laughs> didn't say it was easy. <laughs> Once the proboscis is in there, it squirts out some digestive juices and starts digesting the fly from the inside out. I mean, this particular fly doesn't seem to care. Look at it. It's washing its hands. Get on with it. That proboscis has a little flexi straw inside of it, and they use that to suck out the insides. Anyway, if you fall into some water and are struggling, water striders are like the opposite of a lifeguard. They're a death something. Maybe doorman, because they let people in. Death doorman. And then soon enough, you got a whole bunch of them. It's like a buffet. Now, these insects can hunt and fight on top of the water without getting wet because of surface tension. Just a quick refresher. Water molecules are into group hugs, so much so that they can't stop grabbing onto their neighbors. Now, under the surface, that grabbing is in all directions. But on the surface, one side is air. Those molecules are on the outside of the hug. Their little hiney's getting chilly. And they can only get grabby down and to the sides. And this extra grabbing along the surface causes a layer of molecules to act almost like an elastic sheet. And you can sit right on top of it. Well, you can't. But a water strider can because of some key adaptations. If you look up close, you can see that they're a bit furry. That's because most of their body is covered with these tiny little hair-like seti. These seti have a waxy coating, which is something that water doesn't want to bond with. On the legs, you can see that the tips of the seti bend inwards, so as not to be pokey-pokey on the surface. You can also see that the individual seti are grooved. And that's because all this hairiness and roughness trap little pockets of air, which can act like a cushion between the insect and the water's surface. Now, their whole body is covered with these little seti, and I'll give you one reason why. Rain, which is traumatic at this size. But look at that, they're cool with it. <laughs> it looks like some of them are even having fun. Look at this one riding the upswing and doing a backflip. This incredible ability to repel water allows them to hang out on the surface. But it also means there's not all that much friction on that surface. It's like standing on a greased up trampoline with roller skates on. So if they want to move, they have to use some tricks. Even though those little hairs are water repellent, the fact that they're all pointed in one direction and a little bendy bendy means that they can generate very small adhesive forces with the surface, but only if you go against the grain. So they can use that in addition to pushing off the side of those little dimples that they make. So they don't break the surface, but rather transfer their momentum to water underneath the surface. The strokes leave behind a trail of these swirling horseshoe vortices, a lot like what you might see behind a boat being rowed. This sort of movement, rowing and gliding, is quite efficient, but it's not the only way to do it. Some other water-walking insects use what's called a tripod gait. It can look a bit awkward, and it's not as efficient. But this sort of movement allows them to walk both on water and solid surfaces, which certainly comes in handy if your pond's filled with duckweed. Can't row through that. Now, even though this looks a bit more like walking, the interaction with the water's surface is similar to the water strider. Little waxy hairs trapping pockets of air and creating vortices. But listen, there's times where you might need a bit more oomph in your step. For one, there's things right below you that want to eat you, and they can see you quite well. It's like if the lions at the zoo were just behind some saran wrap. A water strider's not going to rowboat its way out of this one, so instead it jumps. And they're quite good at it, too. But I know what you're thinking. Water striders can fly. Well, it turns out by the time they've started the engines and gotten through the safety demonstration, they'd be fish food. A smaller water strider can do all this without breaking the surface, but some of the larger ones break through and push off the water below, and you can see all those air bubbles that their legs bring with them. But not everyone is gifted with such long legs. Springtails, for example. I mean, looking at them, you wouldn't think that hurdles would be their event. But Lindsay here has some serious ups, and that's because most springtails have a, you'll never guess, a springtail. Well, sort of. The science hippies call it a fricula, and most of the time they keep it tucked in like a sad dog. But if they need to get away in a hurry, they can pop it out. Jerry, what was that? Barely moved. Do another one. Oh, all right, that's better. I know what you're thinking. That's cool, but it's basically just jumping with your butt. But if you look close, they've got another little trick going on. 
They've got a little tubey thing on their tum-tum that attracts water. So you can see as they take off, they take a little drop of water with them. And that's because if you launch yourself into a crazy backflip, you're going to pull out all the stops to stick the landing. First thing they do is change their posture mid-air. And as they fall, this gives them a better chance of landing right side up. Now if they don't, because their bodies are water repellent, they'll bounce around a bit. And that's embarrassing for a springtail. But if they get it just right, they can use that little drop of water they've been carrying to attach to the water's surface. It's sticking the landing, but with like real sticking. Now springtails aren't the only ones to realize the benefits of having some body parts that attract water. Look, Darnell here wants to show you his. Many of these water walkers have a pair of claws on the tips of their legs. They're smooth so they don't trap air and water is attracted to them. And they can use them to pull up on the surface of the water. You might say big deal, but it allows them to do a bit of a magic trick. Here you can see Mesovelia try to scramble up the curve at the edge of the glass. That doesn't work, but then watch this. Let me explain. When water molecules come in contact with something that they're more attracted to than other water molecules, they bond with it. But not only that, they'll start to climb up that surface and pull their neighbors along with them. This creates a curve in the water that changes the direction of the forces acting on the water molecules. You got gravity, surface tension, the attraction of water molecules to each other, and to the new surface. And eventually they balance each other out. But this is essentially a frictionless hillside if you're small like Delilah here. And her water walking won't work, she just slides right off. So to climb it, she first turns and faces it head on. Then she pulls the surface up with her front legs, but also with her hind legs, while simultaneously pushing down with her middle legs. Now this changes the surface tension and the direction that these forces are pulling, and suddenly many symbols appear. But the bottom line is that the changes to the shape of that curve create an imbalance of forces that pull the liner up until they're balanced again. Now this is especially helpful if you're a little beetle larva like this one. Not water repellent, no fancy hooks, wouldn't even have to dress up to be a fish food pellet for Halloween. But watch! It creates a curve by arching its body. And that means it can get to an edge and climb out to safety. Now these forces that pull two curves together are the same ones that cause your Cheerios to clump. And it also works if both curves are pointed down into the water's surface. Now the teeny microvelia like Debra he- oh that's not Debra, it's Casey. Like Casey here have another trick up there, well you'll see. If their little feet and legs get tired from all the scampering, they can just stop and go, Ugh! and look at that, they take off like a little rocket. What they're doing is releasing a small droplet of liquid out their butt. And this liquid acts like dish detergent would if you put a drop into some water with pepper suspended on the surface. The molecules of these liquids will sit on the surface of the water and get in between water molecules. So then there's less water bondage on the surface and less surface tension. The water surrounding that droplet has higher surface tension, and because of that it pulls on the area of lower surface tension. And this becomes a kind of wave that you can surf. And that, my friends, is how the water walkers do.